Hey, this is Kat. We're talking more about data modeling again today. And we said last time that we were going to, we created a die object and we said that this time we were going to look at something a little bit more complex. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at making a game character. So the blueprint for a character that you could use to create multiple characters in a single game. So let's start by looking at what our attributes need to be and what our behaviors need to be. Okay, so here's my blueprint for a game character, and at the top we're going to have our attributes. Oops. And down the bottom we're going to have our behaviors. So remember that our attributes are our variables and our behaviors are usually our methods. So I've been thinking about what a character should have. And I think that there should be a name, which is obviously a string type. Should have an X position and a Y position on the screen. Obviously, they are both integers. Um, depending on what game you're making, you could have something like a health variable, which would also be an int. And what we might do for our last one is we might have an icon, so like an, an image for our character, and that's an image type. Now obviously when we have the constructor method for our game character, we're going to set all of these attributes and give them a value. Other than that, we have to have some behaviors, and typically we would write a set and a get for each of those variables, so we might have something for setting the name, and that will take a string parameter. Uh, we would have get name that will then allow us to find out what the name of our character is. We would have for the X and the Y, you might want to set the position, so set them both at the same time because we can give a method two parameters. Uh, X and Y, they would be ints, obviously. But when we want to get the parameters and find out what they are, we would need to have a separate get X and a separate get Y. Um, we would want to set the health and get the health. So pretty much you do a set and a get for just about everything. And you would also want to set the icon and then also get the icon. Obviously you would need to use get the icon to be able to draw your character on the screen in your actual game. So with a bit of an idea of how we might... Um, of what attributes we might have and what behaviors we might have, we can then go on to now code our game character and then code the game that's going to use the character. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Let's go on to Eclipse and start to build it. So back in Eclipse, I've got my data modeling project from last time and I'm going to create a new class in there and I'm going to call it game character. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put in all our attributes and behaviors and then once we've finished that, then we'll actually look at using this in another class. So our attributes, we said we were going to have a name, we said we we're going to have an X position and a Y position, we said we were going to have health. Um, and we said we were going to have an icon, which is uh, was a game icon. Now this has given me an error. And I said last time that we don't need to import anything when we make our blueprint. But in this case, we do actually need to import the package that allows us to store an image file in there. So if we click on that, it tells us we need java.awt. So we're going to import just that one awt.star and that will get rid of that error. So the first method that we need to write in here is the constructor method and remember that we said it must have the exact same name as our object. So public game character. Now do we want to have any parameters like do we want to set these things to specific starting values based on what the user says or do we just want to give them default values? Um, 
for myself, I would like to I would like to take in a name the first time I run it through. Uh, but the others I would like to just have as defaults. Actually, no, I would like the image as well. Okay, so we'll get the image and the name and the others will be default starting values. So we set the name to the character name that was passed through. So the name that we have here has to be different to the name here, otherwise it's like yelling out in a classroom, Fred, and having two Freds respond. You need to use different names, otherwise it doesn't know which one you're referring to. So we'll use the two that we've passed in first. Okay, then let's give these guys some starting values. Um, I might start the game icon to the very left of the screen, so I'm going to get the little dude to walk across the screen starting at the left. I might want to start in the middle. Um, I'm just going to start at the left because that's what I'm choosing to do. I might start him at 20 because when you start things at zero, they tend to be sort of partly off the screen. So I'm going to start it um, just a little bit on the screen but to the left. The Y, I'm going to have it down the screen a little bit. I might have it at 200. But again, you can set those values to whatever you like. I'm going to set my health to start at 20. Now be very aware, I am not a gamer. I do not enjoy gaming. Um, so the assumptions that I'm making about people who do game are very general. So I don't know what health is normally set at. I don't know if it's normally cold health. That's just what I'm going to run with. Okay, so now we basically want to have a set and a get for each of those variables. So let's start with, we might just work through them from name to X to Y to health and then to game icon. So when we're setting things, we always have public void because it's just changing a value. So public void set name and we might just use what we did before string character name and that's where we say name equals character name. Then when we're writing the matching get method the name is a string type so if we're getting that out we need to have the string as our return type but we don't need to actually give it any parameters. Oops, pound brackets and we just say return name. Okay, and um, when I said that I was going to be setting the X and the Y, I think that they can be set in one step without any hassles. So I might say set position, and we have int X and int Y. Remember that space. So we set, no, sorry, X position equals X y position equals y. Um, but when we get these, in Java our methods can only return one variable at a time, so we must have two separate methods for returning one for the x and one for the y. So get x, we're going to return x position. Terrible typer this morning. And I'm going to be a bit lazy, copy that, paste it, change those two Y's. Um, done that one, done that one, done that one. We're up to health. So remember, public void set health, int health. Now I've given it the same name there. Might call it game health, just so that I don't have two variables of the same name. So health equals game health. And public int get health. Last one, we've got the icon public void set icon uh, 
Um, what did we call it? We called it Gay Micron. And obviously when we're getting the icon, it is an image type. Remember that? Get icon. Return. Uh, inside the class, it's called Gay Micron. Okay, so I think let's collapse those so it's easier to summarize. I'm sure there's a button that says collapse all, but anyway. Okay, we have a constructor method. We've got set and get for name. We've got set and two gets for the position, set and get for health, and a set and get for the icon. So I think we've covered all of those. Um, and now we actually need to make a class that allows us to make the game. So we're gonna, I'm going to make a class called Gameplay. So the first thing I'll do is set it up like I would any other program. Uh, just be aware, I've imported the event here because I know that I'm going to want to use the keyboard to control the player's movement, and that means that I'm going to need an event. So I'm going to incorporate the key listener in this one straight away. If you can't remember what the key listener was about, then maybe go back to one of our previous tutorials where we used the key listener. Okay, so I have just a basic class set up there. And, and what we might do, um, well, really, I guess let's just use our game character. So we declare that we're going to have a type object of type game character. Now it's given me an error because that's a capital G and also because I haven't finished my line. And I'm going to call this little guy Mario. Now I said that I'm very much not a gamer. One of the one games that I did play as a child was Mario. And I'm going to borrow the image of Mario. Uh, remember that it is not my own work, the, the drawing of Mario. It was made by, and I'm sure I'm going to pronounce this wrong, um, Shigeru Miyamoto. And it was made for the Nintendo Mario game. <clears throat> now, being a tutorial, I'm not too concerned about using the character that somebody else designed. But be very aware, if you intend to make a game complete the game, make it playable and share it with other people, you must design your own game characters. Okay, so I am borrowing somebody else's, but that is for a tutorial only. I have no intention of using that for any money making at all. Uh, so you must make sure that you respect the intellectual property of other people when you're designing your work. Uh, okay, so I've got my game character Mario, and I need to say Mario equals new game character. And if we look back at our constructor, we needed to give it two things, a name and an icon. So I'm going to call it Mario. But I also need the image. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I need to, I've downloaded an image and I've got it on my, screen, on my desktop here, mario.png. And I need to put it in the bin folder for that class. Then I go back to my Eclipse. And to get that image, I need to, I think it is get document base, get image, uh, mario.png. And it is all lowercase. Is that giving me any errors? Let's go back to somewhere where we used images. Ah, get image, get document base. Okay, let's just copy that. Because I don't use images very much, it's, it's 
very easy for me to forget the exact code. And most coders will actually refer to um, previous sets of code to remind themselves of certain certain syntax. Um, so I'm giving it the name Mario, and then I'm getting the image to pass through. Okay, so in theory, that's now created a little Mario character with the name Mario, the picture for Mario, at position 2200 with a health of 20. So what I want to do in Paint is I actually want to draw the image. might just grab that image's document back up. And so I need to use Draw Image. But I'm not printing out poster. I'm printing out Mario.getIcon. And I'm printing it at Mario.getX because I need his X position. And I need his Y position, Mario.getY and printing him on the screen. So let's just run that and see if we have a Mario appearing on the screen. Fingers crossed. No little Mario. Oh no, we do. Okay, let's just set the size of our applet to something bigger, 400 by 400. Helps if you spell it right. There's my Mario. Yay! Now what I want to do with him is I want to be able to use the arrow keys on my keyboard to make him move around the screen. So I've implemented the key listener, but if you look in my in it, I haven't actually used it. So I add key listener to this. And then I need to tell it to start listening to the keyboard by using request focus. And that's brilliant, but it's still not actually going to move Mario. So what I want to do, we don't need that anymore, um, is I want to respond to key presses or releases or typed. I might respond to a released. And so I need to write an if statement for each of the arrows. So if get key code is equal to e.vk underscore up, then I want to move Mario up the screen. I'm going to paste that four times. So I'm going to have up, down, left, and right. And I want to move Mario Let's look at the methods that we've created. We can set his position with the X and the Y, um, but when you press up, you don't want to have to give exact coordinates because you're not going to know what they are. You actually want to increment um, based on where you're at. So if they press up, you want to have Mario's current coordinate plus maybe five. So maybe we should go back to our game character and actually make some move methods. So I'm going to have um, public void move up, move down, move left, and move right. Okay, so I've got up, down, left, and right. So if I press up, I want to change the Y position to Y position. Now remember that zero is at the top, so we actually want to decrease the value of Y. We might do it by five. And when we move down, we want to increase the value by five. When they move left, we're decreasing the value of the X. And when they move right, we want to increase the value of the x. Hopefully that makes some sense. So now we've got some methods that will move Mario. So let's say Mario.move up. Mario.move down. Up. 
Uh, move where are we going? Left. And Mario dot move right. And of course, after that, we need to repaint the screen so that when paint happens again, it draws Mario again, but at his new X and Y values. So let's try running that and see if Mario will move. So you must click in the screen first to get the focus, the key listener to start focusing. And there we go, I can move my Mario. Woo! Okay. Awesome, we have Mario. Um, if you wanted to test that he's not going outside the area, you might have something like if e oh, if Mario dot get x. Gosh, what is happening with my typing? If Mario dot get x is less than 20. No, if it's greater than 20, we do want to allow him to move up, for example. So that would, by putting in these kinds of statements, you can actually restrict the movement to within the bounds of the screen. I'm not really going to bother with that right now though. Uh, but yeah, I'm happy my little Mario moves around. Uh, Left. So, like I said, you could test for his X value, make sure it doesn't go off the screen like that. Bring him back. Okay, so the idea of this was that you could then have maybe a second character. So let's, let's call in his little friend Luigi. I'm going to copy that line. Luigi, Luigi, and Luigi. Now, do I have a Luigi in my folder? No, I don't, so let's bring him in off the desktop as well. Let's just copy that. Change all these references to Luigi so that Luigi gets drawn on the screen too. Remember, I also didn't draw Luigi. I'm borrowing him for the purpose of this tutorial. And then we've got Mario and Luigi smack bang on top of each other. So if I wanted to put Luigi in a different spot so he's not on top of Mario, I might say Luigi dot set position. Now my Mario was at 2200 by default. Um, I might put him at 20 but at 240. Let's just run that and see if we can see Luigi. Yeah, we can see Luigi a little bit better there. Now, if I want to respond to the movements, sorry, I'll just run it, stop it, run it, stop it. Um, now, Mario is moving with my arrow keys, but I can't let Luigi move with my arrow keys as well because then it doesn't know whether it's going to move Mario or Luigi. I'm going to copy that. And I'm probably going to get this completely wrong, by the way. Um, but there is usually a set of keys on the left of the keyboard, uh, which is used for two-player games. And I think for up, it's W. And for down, it's S. Left is A. And right is D. Could be completely wrong and obviously you can actually specify it to be whatever keys that you like. Okay, so now I've got eight key presses that will trigger movement. W, S, A and D will control Luigi and the arrow keys will control Mario. So let's see if it works. So I've got Mario moving. And I don't have Luigi moving. The Luigi mystery is solved. Um, 
Because I've got this code in here that's setting Luigi's position to 2240, it's overwriting what it's overriding whatever the new value of Luigi was when I moved him and would always set him back to 2240 so he wasn't moving. So I've commented that line out and um, my Luigi now quite happily moves. Sorry for the silly mistake. Now, one thing you need to be aware of is that you can't actually have, well, it is a bit difficult to have two players playing at the same time because sometimes the keys will interrupt each other and one person will get stuck and the other one won't be able to move. Uh, but yeah, play with it, have fun. Maybe put in a bit of a background, make them race across the screen, race each other, and Luigi wins. Have fun.